guys, this is Sven on the SRS channel back again and today we're gonna have a look at uh, one six scale mentor Ezio Auditoria from the Assassin's Creed Revelations game and uh, this figure is done by Damtoys and as you can see here on the outside of the outer box nice picture of Ezio there with Altair in the background, he's not in the box though, but uh, yeah, uh, there is the side of the box with the logo, the back of the box, the other side, and top with the logo, and the bottom with the same logo, and that's it for the outer box. And there you have the inner box. As you can see, beautiful window display. Got the name here, Mentor Ezio Auditore. Assassin's Creed Revelations and all that. Got the Animus uh, graphic design here with the Assassin's Creed logos and all that. And that's pretty much it for the box. Let me take out the trays and we have a look at the contents. So inside the box, everything is uh, packed in plastic trays as always. And in the top one, you have the figure. It's a quick look at how everything is packaged in the trays. And in the bottom one, you have the stand and weapon, two extra hand pegs and uh, yeah the swords and stuff like that and that's how everything is packaged so as always let's uh, start with the accessories Do this one quick first. Uh, you have this crotch grabber pole, pretty standard now these days. And this is the base itself for the stand, and it is really nicely done. Uh, you got some brick walling here, you see all the stones. Here, almost like a well that's covered with with uh, boards on top there, but uh, I think it's more a bridge and these <laughs> castle walls or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, all the way around here you can see this stone and rock structure at the very bottom. And get all the wooden boards that's tied with the rope here, all sculpted in. And uh, there's the top of the base. You have the Assassin's Creed Revelations logo on the plate in front there. And there's the underside of it with all the copyright stuff and the cool thing damn toys have done with uh, some of these uh, if not all of these spaces is that they give you the option not to use this uh, this rod uh, you have this filler piece here which this time you can just tip straight out of the out of the base and you can insert the pole into the holder and uh, that's pretty awesome just drops in like that uh, I'm 
fit. This one is a tight fit, so I'm gonna do that off camera. And uh, if I need a tool. In the tool, uh, you have this careful get it out there. You have this beautiful looking dagger. Need a good zoom here. Come on, you got the uh, bone handle here. Everything is plastic though. Uh, I got some uh, gold paint with the black wash here at the guard. Got silver and weathering on the blade itself. If I can keep it in focus. Really nicely molded and painted. That's the dagger. We have, let's see here. You get these two hidden blades as well. The really beautiful detailed pattern there on them both and it's a plug-in system and that's good and the other side well, um, so yeah they're pretty much identical and Let's see what I'm taking out. As mentioned, you also get two spare hand pegs. I wish that uh, all the hands had their own hand pegs though, but yeah, you get a spare set of these. That one will just throw back in there. Uh, then we have this. Uh, dagger knife or short sword, uh, the hilt of sheath have a beautiful detailed pattern on it too, silver with the black wash on both sides uh, on the hilt, the sword or blade itself painted silver Handle in some sort of brownish ochre red color, and I can't see it properly myself, but let's see. With the silver at the pommel there, and uh, yeah, that's the knife piece like that and also have this sword really nicely done too Looks like it's supposed to be a wooden sheath with some metal details on it, all plastic though, but really nicely molded or sculpted and painted a sheath. And the sword itself, the handle, um, painted a metal grey with a black wash on it. And sword itself Let's 
to handle again. That's the sword blade. Hope we can keep it in focus there. Really nicely done. That was the sword. Now we're getting to some other details here. You also get if I can get it out, I'll show it to you. You also get his hook blade. I think you can track you can see the sort of the eagle head at the end there. Just the extension piece. So you can just slide down the cables and stuff. And jeez. Uh, there you can see the eagle head. Other side of it, nicely done, nicely detailed. And you also get this is the extended one, by the way. You also get oh, oh come on. You also get a retracted version of the hook blade, which is just the head that you can attach, depending on what you want to use. And there's the plug that goes into the gauntlet. Silver and some gold in there, I can see. And is there anything? Uh, the final piece in the bottom tray is the uh, this one here, uh, some sort of codex disc. Uh, I can't remember exactly what this was, but uh, it's some sort of cold instrument. And you see all the various glyphs or whatever you want to call them around here on the dials. It's painted uh, silver and gold with black trimmings and uh, black details in the uh, various glyphs uh, there's the other side of it uh, it's been so long since i played the game but it's almost sort of look like it's mechanical or something but yeah you got this disc piece there doesn't say Beatles greatest uh, hits on it, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it looks pretty nice, pretty well detailed, cool little accessory. Putting that there. Now that was everything in the bottom tray. Got the two wrist pegs remaining there. Just gonna put that to the side. Now we're gonna have a look at the figure. I make a small cut there and I'll be right back. In the top tray, you have the figure and some extra hands. And uh, let's see here. And this is a sword holding hand, I will assume. Uh, nicely detailed. 
At first, in the first time I had a look at this, they look actually pretty plain, but under the lens of my iPad here, and as I magnify it, you can see the blood veins and some small specks and stuff in the skin. So they're not just plainly painted a skin color here. Really nicely done. And I think I've got the mark from the box on this one. I got the right and left. Aren't they slightly different? Yeah, I think they maybe are, yeah, and there's a slight difference to them, but uh, they're basically the same. It's cool that they're not exact meter of each other, but yeah, you got these two sword holding hands or holding the disc if you want to. And yeah, that's those. And you also get two splayed out hands for using the var various hidden dagger stuff and the hook claw and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, they're done painted the same way. Uh, really nicely done. Small, subtle, little shadings here and there, so they're not just dipped in one color and thrown in the box. So nicely done. And as I said, you get the left and right. And you also get a left and right relaxed hand. Painted the same way, really nicely done. And that's the extra hands. Uh, let's see, let me I'm quickly back in the box there. Like so. And the figure, if I can keep all the bells and whistles on for now. Uh, the hands on the figure, straight out of the box, are tight fits and they are covered in plastic bags. I need to take the hands off to get the bags off though, so I'll do that off camera. The shoes covered in two bags. And as you can not see, of course, the head sculpt itself is also covered with plastic. And there's this bag with stuff you're not supposed to eat. So the figure comes well protected in the box. I'm going to make another cut there and uh, we're going to have a better look at the figure. Hold on. So now as I have managed to take off all the bags and stuff that I cared taking off, i ready to show you the figure. So let's quickly go straight to the face sculpt here. Tempted at pulling the head off to get a better look at it, but uh, let's see if we can't be able to do it. So, anyway, so here you have Ezio at his older days, getting old, getting bearded, and uh, yeah. Hopefully it won't get 
to be washed out here. Nicely painted brown eyes. It's overall it's painted really really beautifully. Damn toys are doing good. Uh, hairline nicely done. Got some liver spots here and there. Turn it this way. I'm not gonna remove the bag or the plastic down here because uh, it's it's gonna it's not gonna show on display anyway, and uh, I don't wanna mess up stuff here just to get to that piece of plastic. But anyway, get you can see some black, blue, silverish, white and some brown and stuff in the hair so it's multicolored you can see the scar on the slip there from when he got hit by that rock on the street when that gang fight Other side of the head, really nicely done. There's the back of the head. And as I've seen in many discussions on Facebook, let's see if it's any apparent here. It, the mold line is pretty well hidden. I can not see it for the life of me, but I know it goes straight across the head here. So they did a good job hiding there. I can see hints of it down here. But other than that, it's, it's really nicely hidden. I never paid uh, much attention to that before, but uh, yeah. Now, it's up to dance. I'm trying not to be sweaty on my fingers, but yeah. Uh, now, as you see in the head, I'm going to pull the hood over. See if I can adjust it somewhat. This is the best I can do straight out of button here, but yeah, it's it needs to be fiddled with a little bit and and it will sit much better. But uh, they have already done the hanging down piece back here <laughs> to put it that way, so it's not much to go on. But uh, if you work with it, you can probably make it sit more flush. The hood, really nicely detailed. Uh, you got the beak of the hood. The hood is wired all the way around here. And we can straighten it out a little. Great, I'll do that later. But you can see the details there in white and gray on a darker gray. As you can see, and you have the Assassin's logo in the triangle is there if if you turn it around you can see that a looking thing so 
I'm gonna do a really quick one before we go into details. As you can see, the entire uh, upper piece of the outfit consists of a white and gray on a darker gray color. Goes throughout the whole costume with various different details and stuff. And my camera is washing out everything as on maybe a little better but yeah you got the assassin's logo there pleather straps got the furry looking stuff there even on the gauntlets and yep there's the ah uh, there's the front and you got a cape in the back which is also wired all the way around but there's the back of the figure with a shoulder pad up there and sort of a bracer on the upper arm there pouch on the back and uh, yeah so let's see here i'm going to carefully move some of the joints there i want to say one thing straight away uh, be careful when handling the furry pieces if you've got sweat or moist fingers because it looks like it can easily be be it, uh, wiped off to put it that way you don't even have to tear it off uh, so be careful when exchange uh, swapping out the hands and stuff uh, looking at the gauntlets really nicely detailed there wonder if i can twist this around or do i have to go yeah this works and on the underside here you can see the single shot pistol attached under his gauntlet done in silver and again. and there you see the slot for the hidden blade or the hook blade right under the barrel there uh, gauntlets are soft rubber with sculpted details and painted and you have the furry pieces there and um, mine here some of it have got stuck inside when they put it on if I slide it off I can probably fish some of the rest of the fur hair out so it shows more like on the other side here but uh, yeah that's that gauntlet the gauntlet on his right hand is pretty much identical done the same way apart from <coughs> not having a gun piece oh, my hand gets in the way here apart from not having the gun it's just a simple blade and you get the hole to put the hook blade or or the hidden blades in there uh, as i said nicely done the buckles there um, i'm not sure but it looks like there's a yep uh, the cape just hooks on here so you can remove the cape if you want to and speaking of being able to remove the cape 
forsaken. It's just a, can you see it? It's just a hook that just slid under the strap there. So if you want to display him without the cape piece here, you probably can do that. See more of the details on the back here. Um, on the shoulder pad. Let's see if I can be able to hook it back on. I think it went on sort of like this, but there yeah, it's, it's it sits there. Uh, any other armor detailing here? We got the various fuck's sake. You got the various uh I'm pointing on my screen, you can't see my finger. Uh you got the various buckles there on the belt done in silver with a black wash. Uh, there are some any shapes in there can't see any particular there but yeah you can see a star here though but yeah got a few ribbits there and there you have the pouch on his back it's small piece it's not functional let's go the other way around it looks like the belt is attached by velcro if you want to attempt at removing that like the side piece of here it looks like it's attached by velcro too and got another buckle here as well all the details in the belt there got the red Sash, sash piece that comes out the back here. Really nice pattern on that one too. If I can get it under the camera light there. As you can see. And more pieces here. With beautiful pattern. Uh, let's see. If I can get a hold on this figure without. <coughs> let's see. Uh, these pieces are wired. And there's a wire that goes down on this side, but not all the way around. And there's a wire in front there too, on the pieces, fuck, pieces under here. Both of them, so they can be posed. Turning the figure around, I mentioned there's a wire in the cape. Uh, this piece is wired on the side here, not all the way around, but it's on the, bo both the outside and inside of this piece is wired, but not the bottom. And uh, these pieces under here are wired down in the middle here too, both sides. Uh, not on the bottom, but on the side here. And that goes all the way around the figure. Uh, this piece isn't wired though, but this one is. And that's all the wired parts in the costume. And here you see the pants. If I can get it a little bit brighter. Here you see the pants there. And here's the boots. A uh, rubber piece with uh, uh, painted brown to look like leather with silver trimmings and stuff. The boots are two piece. There's the peg. So that's so that's like and there's the underside of the boot there. There's the side of the boot. 
Got some more details and an assassin symbol in the back there. So yeah, overall beautifully done figure. No, let me see if I can get him back on his stand. So yeah, that's the quick overlook and just the figure itself. Uh, let me put on some of the pieces that's extra here and I'll be right back. So I managed to put the figure somewhat together here and uh, I put in the retracted uh, hook blade on his right hand and uh, I put in the extended blade in his other gauntlet there. Uh, I also put the knife under this emblem and the sword on the outside of the bigger buckle on this side. Why did I do that? Well, I didn't uh, exactly know where to put everything. <laughs> so I took this little necker guy here and had a quick look at him. Not quite as detailed as the 1-6 scale version, but uh, they already have a place for the dagger and a uh, different type of sword. Uh, this figure actually came with a crossbow too, but uh, yeah. So I just used that as a template for uh, putting on the sword and, and short sword. <laughs> it's a little bit too big for a knife though. Um, can't see anything else on the neck figure here that hints on placement on anything else but uh, yeah let's put that one to the side uh, what was I gonna do uh, yeah let's move in the camera a little bit closer here to see tried to fiddle with the hood too, but uh, it's hard making it stay down much more than that, but uh, yeah, I will make it look better before I put it on display, but uh, I don't want to fuss too much with it in this heat because sweaty fingers and this outfit on these figures they don't match well always try to be clean on the fingers when handling this uh, yeah. uh, hidden blade there and uh, yeah nothing particular on the bottom here to do but uh, yeah do a quick turn around anyway So, uh, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, almost everything on the outfit below the belt here is wired to some extent. Uh, cape is wired all the way around. Uh, be careful with the fussy furry parts there. Uh, what else I was going to say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get... I'm going to do this. You get these hands meant for using with the blades. And you get the relaxed hand as well. For whatever casual pose you want to make then you get these hands and if you bring back the, the lamp here 
If you look at the hand, the pose suggests holding something flat. As you can see, as if you uh, typically I have nothing to hold here when I'm gonna demonstrate something. But uh, fuck it. And this piece. You see this? How I'm holding it? A flat piece. It's the same type of pose. And it works out really well for holding this disc piece. See most fingers support the piece while holding it there. So yeah, it works out really well. So yeah, but then uh, Pardon me, I'm gonna do this on camera. I did it off camera. But yeah, I got this small dagger. Put it in somewhat acceptable pose there. So yeah. Sneak the blade and tuck the finger. No, it doesn't quite work well. This is the best. You can put the small blade here in, and uh, yeah, it works. You can pull it off on display and even. And sort of it's hard making it look good this way, so yeah, you can forget about that. That's with this short blade. Then you have this other dagger that uh, I think. Uh, We'll most likely look at as some sort of relic instead of a weapon accessory for the actual figure. Because there's no freaking way you can get this in here in an acceptable pose. And make it look good. Give me a second, I'm going to try to wrestle it into this freaking hand. Yeah, kind of okay from this angle, <laughs> and, but the handle is way too small for these hands, so yeah, uh, tried it off camera the other way, but uh, give it a go with it again, the dagger is Really, really awkward. It's like, meh. I don't know, guys. So realistically, realistically, I don't think that this particular dagger can be used with these hands. It's only holding hands of sorts. Then we have the final piece here, the sword itself, the bigger one. If I can get it out of this trap. So, yeah. Yet again. You can. The, the hands are pretty pliable, so you can just wrench the finger out, uh, fingers out to make it fit. Uh, it holds the sword. Okay, it looks okay, but not a tight grip though. It's like it's about to give the fuck up and drop it, but yeah, that works out well. But 
not for this one. So uh, I think they should have added a second pair of uh, weapon holding hands. Uh, I'm gonna make a quick cut before I put everything back on the figure here. I'll be right back, hold on. So yeah, uh, that was basically my review on the Damn Toys 1-6 scale Mentor Ezio Auditore from the Assassin's Creed Revelation game and uh, yeah this is the sixth figure in the As uh, uh, Assassin's Creed line from Damn Toys I think uh, they had uh, Altair, they had uh, Connor Davenport, Edward Kenway, uh, Shay Patrick Cormack, Bayek, and uh, now we have Ezio in his old days. Uh, I know they either have released the Assassin's Creed 2 versions of the Ezio figure, but uh, 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 they, they have it coming anyway. So if anyone missed out on the Hot Toys Assassin's Creed 2 Ezio, uh, they can still get it through Damn Toys. I'm gonna pass on theirs because I have the Hot Toys version. So yeah, this is the seventh Assassin in my collection now, if I'm not totally wrong. And uh, yeah, uh, Damn Toys are doing awesome on these figures. I love the wiring in the costumes. Uh, I love the details, the printed details. It almost feels sort of like there's a rubber coating on the fabric, but uh, yeah. Uh, details are spectacular. There's details everywhere. Nicely painted, nicely sculpted, everything. And uh, I put in the uh, uh, retracted hook blade there, removed the hidden blade. I'm gonna keep the sword and short sword or dagger or whatever you wanna call that on the figure. Um, I'm gonna display him on the stand here as he's standing. Uh, I might swap out one hand for a uh, holding hand to hold the disc though. But uh, traditionally I have all my assassins wielding one hidden blade and their respective other weapons. So maybe this sword and stuff. But uh, yeah. There's so many of my figures holding swords now that I can barely fit anymore in the Diatovs. So, yeah, I was in the process of giving this a spin. I uh, still couldn't get the hood to sit right though, but uh, from certain, ang ang uh, certain angles it looks better. Damn, can't even talk anymore. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Really nice detail on the figure and the details pop. I love bright details against dark surfaces and vice versa. Uh, creates a really nice contrast. Uh, I'm gonna display him with this cape because uh, as mentioned I already have this little Neko figure here. Doesn't come with a cape. But uh, I might give that figure away now as I have the have the ultimate representation of the character in one six scale here. That's what matters to me. I want all my favorite characters in one six scale. Especially if it's just one character, in cases like a whole franchise like Mortal Kombat with multiple figures. I'm more than happy to settle with smaller scale figures due to the display space. But uh, yeah, 
one six scale and a bow it's the way to go this is where you get the uh, fantastic use of fabrics you don't have rubber and stuff that cracks after a hot summer and a cold winter and stuff like that so yeah really really nice figure i love it i'm really happy that i actually bought this figure i hope they're uh, the next assassin's creed figure in the line uh, will be the assassin's creed brotherhood version with the all white costume uh, if i get my hands on that one then uh, i can die happy to put it that way some pieces left over here this one goes straight in the box because uh, i'm using the poles uh, extra hands will go straight back in the box and uh, probably this dagger too because three daggers in his belt it's a bit too much unless I can figure out if this other blade goes somewhere specific like a spot on in the boots or something that I haven't seen yet but uh, yeah I've put the uh, weapons needed on the figure there as they were on my small NECA figure. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, this is what you get with the figure in the box. And uh, yeah, you get the extra pair of uh, wrist pegs too so yeah that's pretty much it for my review if you like my review please give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and as i always say please go nuts in the comments but uh, yeah if you have any specific questions about the figures i review please ask them in the comments and i'll I will try to answer them as best as I can and if needed I will make a video to really explain what I mean but uh, yeah I'll try to answer most questions in the comments if you have them but there's never much of comments so uh, I'm pretty safe on that part but yeah I hope you enjoyed my review guys and uh, as always uh, yeah stay awesome and uh, don't get catch the covid stuff and uh, if you don't you probably catch me in the next video see you next time guys bye bye